presenter. And I would just like to introduce him briefly, as well as our discussant. Dr. Chidi is a independent researcher and development specialist with over 20 years of experience in the civil society. And he has uh, been working on uh, research of two research projects on sexualities and gender-based violence. Uh, one of them is the study of men's engagement in women-led organizing, leading during sexual violence interventions at five Nigerian higher education institutions. Uh, he will be speaking today on another study which he's doing with the British Council on experiences and perceptions of UK university graduates and prospective students in Nigeria. We also have with us Dr. Bikola Oyinlole, who is an early career researcher with a PhD in international development and education. Her doctoral study explored the perspectives and practices of families around schooling in West, rural West Africa. Her research interests include childhoods and youth in a majority world context, informal apprenticeships, ethics, indigenous epistemologies, and school leadership and management. She also has several years of experience in the international development sector where she led research and monitoring evaluation activities of large education interventions. Her experience spans Sub-Saharan Africa, South America, and North America. So she's in the best position to speak on this research, which pretty much is a study of what happens in real life, what we the application of what we are researching in higher education. Um, Dr. Chidi will also be joined by some of his colleagues, which are part of the, the British Council um, colleagues, which are part of the project. Um, although they are not here at the moment, um, in case they do join us, I just want to introduce them. One of them is Mrs. Adetomi Soyinka, who is currently a British High Council, British Council Program Director for Nigeria and the Higher Education Portfolio Lead for Sub-Saharan Africa. The other person would be Mr. Atom Ofem, who is the Monitoring, Evaluation and Results Manager for British Council in Nigeria. He supports a wide portfolio of programs for Nigeria and Sub-Saharan Africa in general. I will be sharing my screen um, as chair because um, Dr. Our presenter has a problem um, sharing using Microsoft Teams. So um, in my place, Bertha will be admitting people and recording the session. Thank you. As we're five minutes in, let me share screen now and hand over to them. Dr. Chidi, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much, Monique. Um, thank you for the um, introduction. Good morning, everyone. It is morning in Nigeria. Good morning. Um, this morning, I will be presenting on um, Good International Higher Education Partnership and sharing Nigeria and UK universities experiences. Um, um, a lot have been said in the literature about the need to build a um, partnership, especially North South, Global South, Global, Global North, Global South partnership, um, you know, as part of the ways to enhance uh, capacity transfer and also build capacity. So in this presentation, we'll be sharing um, uh, the experiences um, based on um, um, from British Council funded projects. Next slide. Next. On it? Yes. Next. Okay. Um, this is a very this is a very brief um, presentation. Um, This is a very brief, brief presentation, and um, uh, just as an um, introduction and an introduction of the partnership projects, and the uh, brief uh, information about the evaluation, and uh, some of the key findings, um, lesson learned. Actually, key find lesson learned are also part of the key findings, but for emphasis 
um, we separated them and then some recommendations. Um, the, the presentation will be, as I mentioned earlier, will be brief, but um, we'll also be sharing a um, letter. I'll we'll be able to send it to Monique to share um, with participants um, um, a broader summary of your reports. There's a summary version, which is broader than what we're going to present here today. So in 2018, British Council funded a number of um, research projects around high, international higher education partnership. Um, it, I, I designed and led one of these, which for which I focus on them, the, the framework, um, the policies, the operational, the operational framework, policy framework, regulatory framework for, for the operation of international higher education partnership in Nigeria. So there were also others. So um, on the back of this, um, um, these research projects, British Council issued them um, initial, uh, initial grants, which you call, call seed grants to, to three Nigerian um, um, teams. I use the word team because one of them was a, a tripartite model. So these, univers these are universities um, engage other universities, uh, reach out to universities in the UK to build this partnership. I'll be talking about this uh, partnership later. So uh, after um, at the complete at the completion of the project, especially two of them, because of the COVID um, um, outbreak, one of them couldn't complete. But at the expiration of the timeline for the project, it was evaluated. This presentation is pre um, just a kind of summary of um, the key findings and the processes of the um, of the project, as well as the evaluation. So the partnership the British Council supported uh, had two critical focus on two critical teams. One is um, it, it sought to enhance um, funding or sustainable fund sustainable funding for Nigerian higher education institutions, and also enhance um, employability uh, as well as uh, um, employer academia relationship then each of the project now had distinct um, um, focus and objective but in all the, the the outcome or the expected outcome for the three were first um, to increase knowledge and sharing of the global best practices then the second was um, to strengthen the the higher Nigerian higher education institutions so that they can be more effective, not just at the policy or research level, but also the practical level. Then the third is to, uh, to improve the UK Nigerian higher education partnership and collaboration. Next. So, as I said earlier, there are three, three key partnership projects involved. The fourth partnership was a dual partnership a partnership between Olabisa Olabanjo University, uh, um, that is um, OOU, and the Swansea University in the UK. So this partnership actually focused on um, collaboratively developing a kind of revised version of uh, updating the funding model for the university. This also involved a kind of organization of capacity building workshops at, this, at Swansea, and also some roundtable meeting in OOU. So there's a kind of, not just, um, these are the key summary, but there were a lot of interactions or continuous interaction between the two universities. The, the, the second partnership was a tripartite model. That is, there are three universities were involved. The first was Quara State University um, and the Co uh, Covenant University. Um, these are Nigerian universities on the one hand, and um, the um, University of Wolverhampton, UK, on the other hand. So the, three, the Wolverhampton was the UK partner, while the two Nigerian partners were Kwasu and the Covenant University. And uh, the partnership sought to scale up um, Kwara State and or Kwasu um, the lab. There's, what it, there's a lab they have there called the Center for Entrepreneurship Lab. They wanted to up to improve, scale it up. And also that of the Covenant University Hebron Startup Lab. They wanted to, um, to upgrade it to Campus Innovation Hub. So this also, the, in the process of doing this or achieving this, involved some exchange visits 
for Nigeria and the UK partners, visiting Nigeria and the UK partners, visiting uh, visited UK partners, visiting Nigeria, and Nigerian partners, visiting the UK partner, and also it also involved um, uh, strengthening or equipping of um, the workspace that uh, support um, student start startup or student projects. Next. The top partnership is um, Federal University, do say, um, FUD and the Sheffield. The, this, this one is sought to develop um, a kind of a, um, revised version. It is close to its objective is similar to the first one, to develop a revised, a revised and sustainable funding model for, for FUD. And um, through knowledge exchange, just, as, just like the first one, and um, support, uh, provide a kind of um, pathway for supporting um, the university projects, especially the agriculture and the innovation hub. So the first two partnerships I just discussed completed their project. They began earlier, but the last one um, could not um, take off before COVID um, outbreak. The major reason was it took time for it to secure a UK partner to work with. Others were able to secure part, um, part UK partners earlier and work together so they could complete their project before COVID-19 outbreak. But um, um, the last one could not fully take off before then, so it actually delayed it. So most of the discussion here will we, we'll be around um, the, the, the experience of the two and to some extent the experience of the last one that couldn't take off because there are other things we learned from it next. So, so this evaluation adopted two, two frameworks, and OEE, EDAC, and, um, uh, and the, the, the British Council's um, result evidence framework. The, the OEC, EDAC, uh, DSC actually um, has such elements like um, relevance of a, of a project, effectiveness of the project, efficiency, impact, and sustainability. But uh, the British Council's um, high, um, result evidence framework um, included issues like the proof of concept, the implementation approach, um, the kind of um, sustainability or looking to the future, how it connects to the big picture, as well as internal ways of working. So um, while the first one helped us to, con to look at the project itself, the second one um, not doesn't just look at the project itself, it also um, look at the British Council's way of working. What can British Council learn from this? Not just to, uh, in terms of um, strengthening the project, but also in strengthening its way of working. So um, the, uh, the evaluation objective was largely, um, they were la um, likely to assess the uptake and the usage um, of the, uh, the initiative and also to understand to understand very well the, the stated activities, how they were actually implemented and what we we'll learn from them. Then um, also to understand the extent to which um, the project actually strengthened the ne network building, partnership building, collaboration between and, and among universities, both Nigerian universities and the UK universities. It also tried to understand whether the, pro the project increased a kind of um, collaboration between UK and, and Nigerian institutions. Then identify existing strengths or observable strengths and the weaknesses in the process, um, not just the, the design, but also the actual imp implementation. In fact, all, uh, looking around, looking um, at the whole project holistically to, to identify the strengths that could be replicated and sustained, as well as weaknesses and things that could be adjusted. And then from these, make recommendations for sustainability. Um, this, whether the project could be sustained the, or the adjusted, or um, um, if there are anything that could be done to, to achieve better results. Next. So in doing this, um, um, we adopted a number of, uh, Method. So there's a combination of methods which include a um, review of the literature, 
Yes, we reviewed the literature, but not largely, not um, go, we didn't go too far in academic literature because there were a lot of project um, literature to review from the design, the concept, the British Council concept, the idea, things that led to the project itself, understanding them, and also looking at the report of the project, because this is like ESPO evaluation, it was uh, the project had been completed except that of the FUD by the time we began. So we look at, uh, we examined a lot of um, reports, documents that related to the project. Then there was also a particular self-assessment um, uh, report the, um, these um, project implementers uh, or the, the grantees um, uh, wrote. So, uh, because the project gave them, the project gave them a kind of seed grant and uh, based on agreement, what they need to do or what they expected to do. So they went ahead to implement the project. At the end of it, they were also expected to assess themselves. So the, the self-assessment reports um, was also part of uh, things we reviewed. Then we went ahead to interact with both the British Council teams uh, and also the, the grantees to understand what happened, how they went about doing it. Then uh, conducted some formal interviews and the survey of entrepreneurs. The survey of entrepreneurs was largely that of the tripartite because they made effort to, uh, their project included um, expansion and um, as expansion, capacity building, and strengthening of the student startups. They went ahead to, to expand the, to their, their network and their network building and you know, collaboration with their alumni that already have some startups. So uh, we tried to interact with uh, those we, could, uh, we were able to reach to understand the perspective, the experiences, the benefit challenges from their own perspective. Next. So um, here we, we have a number of findings, and um, this is not uh, this this uh, the, the work we listed here. Just few. When you get the handout, you you will see um, some more. One of the one of the initial uh, one of the first finding um, or important thing we observe is that it helped to build new collaborations. Beside the existing collaboration, the British, uh, the British Council grant helped them to build with the UK universities. It led to building of new collaborations. For example, in, the, in, in Covenant University, um, they reached out to the alumni that have startups and brought them in to be either to serve as mentors to the new ones. So there was a kind of um, um, collaboration that brought not just the capacity, it also brought money because they also got some funding um, from these um, local supports, local organizations they were collaborating with. There are some others were able to reach out to, I think um, also Para, um, they reach out to Kwasu, they reach out to uh, organization, um, organization like Fidelity Bank, Co Creation Hub. But usually, initially, these could have been a standalone operations, but the project now create a space for building for you know, for building new collaborations new funding initiate and new funding even new initiatives so it could cause a catalyze a kind of um, out of bus thinking instead of doing it the way they, they used to do it they needed to make this seed grant work then there was need not just to show results but to produce them um, um, the tangible sustain and sustainable re result out of this. So they had to think out of the bus. So for, for Kwasu, and not just Kwasu, but Kwasu and um, um, CU, Governor University, it created a kind of expansion beyond, uh, beyond what it used to be within their circle. And also it inspired, the project inspired international collaborations. Um, the, the tripartite um, um, partnership, had a kind of um, a thing, a kind of opportunity to interact with the people not just within Nigeria, but also I think one of the one of the uh, one of the institutions was um, um, uh, from South Africa, and um, also with for the Wolverhampton, um, as the some departments within the within the university also 
extended the, collab the collaboration and um, a kind of um, um, sub institutional collaboration, not just uh, the one the university is doing. So it, uh, it created a kind of expansion in terms of, in the, in terms of the level, the extent, the, the dimensions of collaboration, and also get the exposure to, um, to Nigerian universities. Uh, this one is very important, especially for FUD. Um, FUD is relatively a small university. And I remember during interaction with um, some of the key stakeholders, they, they said they, they, this, this has given them a kind of exposure, something they might not be able to do um, by themselves. Uh, originally, if they wanted to reach out to some universities, they might not easily do it. But mentioning that this is a collaboration supported by the British Council, it gave, it gave them a kind of a boost, a kind of, you know, put, not just um, um, platform, but also strengthen their um, um, the, 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 the uh, um, reason to engage. Then the second one was um, the, the, um, the project helped to um, deliver British Council Nigeria plan. Part of the things in the plan is to, to enhance partnership, to build capacity within Nigeria. So you see the, uh, the, the promotion of uh, the, the project that promoted uh, um, or supported startups in one way or the other was enhancing entrepreneurial uh, knowledge and skills, especially among the students that benefited from the project. And also the, the partnership between Nigeria and UK education station contributed to achieve some of the objectives in the British Council um, um, uh, country plan. The exchange visit helped to, uh, to create a platform for capacity transfer. The Nigerian partners went to UK to uh, UK institutions to learn, and they also came here to to see to themselves how things were going and provide some kind of support. Next. So then um, the the third is uh, the third uh, important finding related to the the relevance of the project to universities need. Some of the Nigerian universities um, um, hubs, like um, the Hebron hub in, in CU and that of the Kwasu, they operated at some levels, but they needed to be expanded so that it will serve not just um, the university, but also serve all the students and the alumni. So these, um, these, um, this partnership helped to transform and expand this. It also helped to promote um, a kind of uh, industry, um, university industry partnership, because it wasn't just a university affair alone. Um, the, the partners went ahead to, to, show, to look for additional funding to support their projects. The seed grant was, um, wasn't enough when they began to implement. So they needed more partners to collaborate with them. They also needed more partners to contribute in terms of capacity, um, building. They also, they also needed to link not just their students but also their staff to some of this. So the exchange visit wasn't just visiting the UK. There was also that of um, um, that of um, Kwasu, I think Kwasu and um, and the OOU. They need to visit some so, some local industries to see how they operate, the needs, and the, the build a kind of synergy. Um, that contributed to um, to a, a kind of a setting a platform for for future partnership. So the the, the next is the transnational partner uh, mentorship, which um, Nigerian institutions need. I've, I mentioned this earlier about no South capacity transfer. So it was a it was purely a platform for transferring capacity between them of uh, capacity transfer between the North and the South. The relevance of the higher education initiative to students and entrepreneurs. This project specifically um, created this the opportunity for students to to you know to generate their new initiative, get opportunity to be mentored, and uh, for them to expand. Uh, those that started something to expand. Those that we are here to start to start. So it, uh, it helps students start up. And, and support those that were existing and they create a platform for them to generate new ideas and start up something. So some of these include the Splats, Getters, um, Invest Naira, and EduStart Global. 
They, one of the great, one of the biggest contribution uh, the students and um, uh, one of the biggest benefits of this project is the, this opportunity to build their capacity, support their capacity, their, uh, the, the, their initiative to grow. So this is one of the important things that kept coming out um, um, during interaction, especially with the with the beneficiaries. Next. Another finding uh, that related, uh, another important finding is the what we term success factors. There were some some factors that created the enabling environment for the projects to succeed. One is the design and the nature of the partnership itself, which created opportunities to draw from um, from international support and international capacity transfer to build local local, local capacity. So uh, the, the design, not just um, not just um, um, interaction, okay, like that of the that, that the, the tripartite partnership was was gaining from the, um, from we were learning from each other. We had a, a public institution that is Kwara State, Kwara State University Paso. We have Co, um, um, we have Covina University, which is a private institution. So the, it was an opportunity for them to learn. Um, as institutions, thing that there are things that make um, some private institution like Covina University to to work better, to progress faster. So coming together, it was like learning from uh, from uh, between themselves, and at the same time learning from the from an international partner. Another issue is an, the project because it, it, the support were coming from the British Council, not just something people within the institution initiated. It created space for a kind of uh, the, something that gave reason for them to interact. Uh, the usual uh, bureaucracy was taken away. The, the, the project, the project uh, grantees of them, or the managers of the project who interact with different, le at, with different um, levels of management within the institution. And also, um, they could, it, it, it now created or catalyzed a kind of commitment. Um, when I, I spoke, I was, I was interacting with the FUD, I spoke with the incoming vice chancellor. And um, so you see, the, if you see the level, so the, the people that were involved, it, it was easy to, for them to see the, next, the benefit and now commit the university's um, funding and also time and uh, staff time to ensure that the project succeeded. Then there was another important um, aspect, the role of Nigerian diaspora. Many of these institutions that collaborated had Nigerian, a, a Nigerian working um, within, within the institution as a member of the team or leading the team that collaborated with Nigerian partners. In fact, a, the, the FUD couldn't secure a partner until they were able, they found an, um, a university that had Nigerian who was um, also interested and in supporting the whole system. That helped to speed up um, the collaboration. Next. So, yes, the project succeeded, but there were also some limitations observed. The first one was the design didn't accommodate contingencies. The project it was designed to start from this time and from end, end at, at a particular point. With, I didn't consider things like a COVID in my coming to interrupt. So it now missed some designs, um, some things that could have helped. In the recommendation session, we talk about the need to embed the virtual model because um, it didn't envisage Envisage things like COVID. There was no virtual model embedded within the system. So also, it didn't. It was not given enough publicity either within the institution or um, across Nigeria by the British Council. The funding British Council gave them was just um, a seed grant. It wasn't enough. So some of the startups were yearning for funds to to implement their projects or to drive their initiatives, but it was not there. Um, because it was not um, fully captured into in the initial design funded by the British Council, and there was a funding limit. Then um, we, uh, there were uh, a few the experience um, challenges securing partners, so that showed a kind of limited interest from UK universities to collaborate with Nigerian institutions. COVID-19 was a, a, a game changer, and it seriously affected um, the that of a few at that time. Next.
Okay, so let me summarize briefly, um, and we just have about one or two minutes. Let me summarize the key lessons um, learned. The first is that British Council had a kind of pre-grant pre and pre-proposal writing training. So within this period, um, about, uh, uh, within the, before the before um, the grants, before the call for grants, the the potential applicants were invited. Sorry, before the call for proposal, the potential applicants were invited to some workshops. One, I think, one in Lagos, one in Abuja. That help them to understand what the project is all about, what to expect, how to go about with the application. And some of them explained that it helped them a lot. It was very useful for the application. Then I've mentioned about the, the public-private partnership we observe in, in between Kwasu and the, and the Governor University. So, so it helped them to strengthen their weaknesses. I, earlier I talked about the, the benefit of the tripartite model. They were learning from themselves at the same time learning um, from the UK um, institution. The industry, relation, industry, university relationship is also another important thing we learned. I'm not going to repeat this. I've mentioned, I've kind of summarized this earlier. Then knowledge is changing. This is very, this is very important. Um, uh, when we were the, when British Council were designing this project, it may not fully understand the extent the knowledge exchange might take place. But the interaction, because of the constant interaction, there was a kind of continuous learning from Nigerian universities to UK universities. Even the UK universities had to also learn some things. Um, but this is not um, largely part of um, um, this, this aspect of presentation. Then the seed grant was a push. Something they couldn't have done by themselves, the seed grant pushed them to do it, caused them to, to think out of us and created a kind of um, a, a, a kind of a, a platform for them to or a, a, um, to fill a gap. It created an opportunity for them to to push their um, something they, they might have been thinking or written somewhere, but no opportunity to implement it. So the seed grant now became a kind of push. Even though they, they, they generated a lot of fun um, from elsewhere, but they need that, that initial push caused them to, to think out of us and generate more. Next. So we have a number of recommendations. One is um, they need to consider virtual model. Um, the Sheffield FUD had a challenge because there was no the virtual um, element was not embedded in the design. So there is need to consider it in the future designs so that um, it will address issues that may, may be affected, issues that may be affected um, when traveling, um, when there is limited, when there are challenges in terms of uh, move, international movement, whether it is visa, whether it is um, COVID-19 pandemic or anything else. We, we recommend that the multiple partnership should be explored more than the dual partnership because it creates opportunity to learn more. There is also a need to create a kind of interface, um, a kind of platform where UK and Nigerian institutions will interact. That, that will also help UK institutions to understand Nigerian, invest, Nigerian institutions better, create space for them to do this collaboration rather than allowing them to, to shop for partners by themselves. Then. Um, I mentioned earlier that we have in some of these institutions, this um, like in FUD, um, the the person that the the, the pro person that was leading the project was um, a letter. By the time I was interacting with them, was the incoming um, vice chancellor. In um, um, in Kwasu, there was a kind of change in in the position. Um, someone uh, the, the there was a kind of change. Somebody replaced the project. Um, the project coordinator. Then in in um, in OOU, it was the deputy vice chancellor academy. That, I think academy that was uh, coordinating. But her, when her tenure expired, so the, there was need for a change. So it is important to consider who um, the kind of, the position of people who coordinate the project, rather than uh, rather than leaving it in the hand of tenure track um staff who when they change when they leave or when there is a change it may affect the flow or the continuity of the project there is need for uh, for the for the new designs 
to specifically stipulate the kind of um, staff that my lady so there will not be interruption. Then there is also a need to establish a, um, a kind of tracking system that for, that not just supports, also not just understand what they are doing, the beneficiaries, including the student startups or the alumni, understanding what they are doing, but also provide a kind of mentorship platform um, to, to train, support, follow up, and they continue to report um, uh, um, the progress they are being made or challenges they are facing. Next. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Chidi. Thank you to our presenter. That was a very engaging presentation and I myself have some questions. Um, but I just want to note that um, Prof. Marco, Prof. Walker is not here today, although she is the one you had reached out to um, to secure this presentation and she was really interested in it. Unfortunately, she's unwell, so she asked me to pass on her regrets for not making it today. Um, we have an unprecedented number of participants today, so we have, I'm sure, it's going to be engaging. Um, on to your um, discussion right now, Bikola. Thank you so much, Monique, and uh, thank you, Chi, for what was a, a sort of breathless run through of what I think must have been a, a tremendous amount of work. Um, I, I know it must have been challenging to try to say everything you you want to say about what you've done and, and what you you were able to find in in just 30 minutes so so i appreciate your ability to be able to do that within the time allotted uh, it was clearly a lot of interesting findings a uh, lot of interest and engagement um, with not only british council but also the the various participants um, and grantees of the project so my my present uh, my intervention I should say is going to be sort of in three in three parts and the last part is going to be I suppose in two parts but um, I will note that it's probably going to be a little bit broader than than specifics I know as Monique said that there are quite a few people with us today so I imagine they they will have more specific interventions and um, I also had the privilege of reading the summary report Chidi earlier so. Um, a lot of my intervention is going to be sort of a combination of that and what you've presented this morning. So it will be a little bit uh, broader. Um, so first in relation to, to methods, uh, I found it quite interesting that you were able to combine uh, different types of methods. So in the, in the summary report, as well as in the presentation today, you talked about sort of document reviews and um, qualitative and quantitative primary data. Um, so I was wondering if you could say a little bit more about where the primary quantitative data came from. So I was trying to read the summary report to sort of get a sense of, of that. I know you met, uh, you mentioned some things around surveys with the entrepreneurs who were coming out of the, the various labs. So I wasn't quite sure whether that was where the quantitative data was, was coming from. And um, I thought it would have been also good to, to include a bit more quant data within uh, the, the summary report as well as the presentation, just to give us a bit of a sense of of some of the arguments that you present. So I think there were some things, some comments or findings around the increases in revenues from some of the, the university participants. And I thought it would have been useful to get a sense of what that increase was. So where they're starting from and um, where they are getting to. So what's the, what's the extent of the increase in their revenue in terms of their participation in this project? Um, and I thought uh, it would have been helpful also to see a little bit more information on the on the analytical approach employed. So again, because you are triangulating what appears to um, to be various or diverse sources of, of data, um, it would have been very informative to get a sense of how you manage to sort of combine these and analyze the data. Um, in terms of the findings, uh, I'll say a few things about the findings before I go on to the, the, my last uh, bigger area of comment. And uh, I think the main thing that I thought in relation to the findings was that these were very useful. It was really interesting to get a sense of the outcomes of the project. 
um, and you mentioned that your evaluation was framed by the OECD DAC framework, as well as the results framework of the project itself. Um, so I think it would have been sort of a bit mechanistic, but that is how evaluation tends to be sometimes. But I think it would have been quite helpful to get a sense of the findings in relation to these DAC criteria. So relevance is about sort of doing the right things, um, whether the evaluation or the project is doing the right thing. So you know, in the summary report, there was something uh, around um, the transformation of the hubs and, and how that was relevant to, to, to what the universities themselves were trying to do. And you mentioned that in your presentation as well. I was quite interested in getting a sense um, about the extent to which the, the project itself, the idea of the project itself was policy relevant. So again, in your methods, you talked about reviewing documents, especially project documents, but I wasn't quite sure whether policy documents were also part of this and whether, for example, um, so this drive or this interest in entrepreneurship uh, is part of the higher education curriculum in Nigeria, or if it's part of any sort of stated government agenda, which could be what was driving so the genesis of providing the rationale for this project. Um, in terms of effectiveness, I think perhaps a bit of a matching of the objectives of, of the program, of the project rather, of, the, of each of the partnerships, and matching them to what was actually achieved in terms of those, those specific objectives. Again, evaluation work tends to be a bit mechanistic, but that, that does tend to help when we're trying to get a sense of the extent to which the projects have achieved what it is that they they set out to achieve. Um, one of the questions I had around effectiveness was, for example, whether Kwasu and Covenant, um, who sought to upgrade their centers to campus innovation hubs, whether this was something that had been achieved. So this was something that was mentioned in the summary report. So I wasn't quite sure whether this upgrading that they desired to do or this objective of upgrading was something um, that, that, that had been achieved. Um, in terms of efficiency, I think uh, it would have been useful to get a bit more sense of the actual resources. So you talked a lot about the seed grants. Um, it would have been good to get a sense of, of how much those were. Uh, I know there were some limitations. I think you found that uh, those were inadequate or insufficient rather. So it would have been good to get a sense of how much those were, sort of quantify that a little bit. Um, I suppose some more details of who was managing the budget. I know you used the word grantees and partnerships, but it wasn't clear within those partnerships who was holding the budget, who the budget holders were, um, and who was managing those uh, th those budgets within each of these partnerships. Um, impact is in some sense similar to efficiency, and, and, and so some of those comments uh, follow from that. You spoke a little bit uh, about sustainability, and in the summary report you had a good section on su sustainability, so I think the findings around sustainability were, were quite encouraging, particularly in terms of the the continuation of the relationships between these various partners. So that was quite positive to see. And uh, there were some allusions to, uh, to sustainability in relation to the, the partnerships that were being formed with people ex or, or industry partners rather. So local, um, regional sort of industry partners that the universities were forming relationships with. So that was quite, that was quite important. Uh, that was quite an important finding. Uh, but there seemed to be certain threats to sustainability, if you will. So you made a comment around sort of, you know, university's willingness to collaborate within this project because it was being, um, if you will, sort of spearheaded by the British Council. Um, and that was because it was British Council rather than institutional uh, sort of uh, departments or agents. So, you know, if you could offer a bit more reflection on what that means for sustainability, because the British Council is not going to be around forever. Um, this is a sort of a time delimited project. Um, and you talk also about the positions of the project leads. Again, what does that mean for the sustainability of a project like this when that does happen? And the other thing that I wanted to pick up on that was um, the, the seed grants issue. So you talked about <clears throat> the entrepreneurs themselves needing seed grants to start up their enterprises. So that's a, <clears throat> this, excuse me, this is a big thing for, for sustainability of, of entrepreneurship projects all over Africa, actually. Um, so whether this is something that you thought about in terms of sustainability as well would be would be um, would be quite important. Um, I would say very much about the limitations. I think those are very useful limitations that that you you identified. Um, I was a bit curious about the issue of publicity, um, why you thought this was needed, and why you thought universities um, within the report why university UK universities needed to know the existing funding model in Nigerian institutions. So I wasn't quite clear on 
what that information was going to give them. Um, so the last sort of few minutes I'll spend on the other bit, which I didn't quite know what to call it. But again, this is going to step a bit higher than than some of the points that you've made. Um, so in terms of conceptualization of partnerships, I, at the beginning you started off by saying that you didn't have uh, as much time to review the existing academic literature on, on partnerships. And, uh, and I understand this is an evaluation report and the scope is limited and you sort of focused on project documentation. But I, I thought that was, if you will, a lost opportunity to so I think move the debate or the discourse a bit forward in, in relation to what partnership means. So I was looking for a sort of conceptualization, if you will, of partnership. And to some extent, you conceptualize it because you talk about or you typologize partnerships. So you mentioned dual partnerships and tripartite partnerships and public-private partnerships. Um, but I was looking for something a little bit more than that um, to talk about what, what partnership means within the context of this, of this project. And um, there's a bit of challenging of that term partnership in some recent work. So there's some scholars that are, that are looking at um, North-South research partnerships, for example, and they suggest that, um, or they sort of critique the, 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 the conceptualization of partnership as framed by effectiveness, if you will. And they, they, they suggest a discourse of collaboration that is framed by fairness and equity. So they're trying to get into a little bit of um, um, conceptualization. And, and you know, partnerships are underpinned by relationships. You know how people exist in relation to the other or an other, and this I think uh, entails an examination of power: who has it, who is wielding it, and how they're they're, they're wielding it. And I think in the context of this partnership with former co colonies or former uh, in institutions with former colonial legacies, um, there could have been I think uh, some historicization of of relations of, of power um, in the partnerships between these these different uh, institutions. Uh, so sort of an engagement with power as well as sort of the context that, that shape power and and hierarchize not knowledge, if you will. Um, you know, so so you know, in terms of this deeper interrogation of partnership, you know, can you really have a partnership when the relations of power may be so imbalanced? And what what might a transformative partnership look like in in a project um, like this or transformative collaboration? So so I think a bit more criticality in terms of the findings in relation to to the partnership. So again, from the summary reports. Um, you know, it, it didn't really seem to me that it was a partnership because you use language such as UK institutions were providing knowledge, they were providing resources, they were supervising, they were deciding models to adopt, um, but it wasn't quite clear what the Nigerian universities were providing in this partnership. So what was their role? Um, they seem to be receiving a lot, but not necessarily um, giving a lot or, or sharing enough. So so I thought I thought this was in some sense a little paternalistic um, because they didn't seem to be true partners. They, they, they seem to be receiving a lot. Um, and uh, similar to that, some criticality on on what appears to be an assumption that that what the UK universities were providing um, could not be obtained in Nigeria and Africa, or that partnering with UK universities increased international exposure. So this issue of one of the universities not having international exposure, um, you know, what, what value or relevance does this have for the university, apart from the opportunity to attract funding, which is not guaranteed. Um, so, you know, so, so, so something, I think mean, there's something here about your recommendation on the multiple partnership model, but I think, you know, we can extend that a little bit, you know, why, why for example, why, why can't British Council use its convening power and funding to facilitate intra-African relationships? Like, why does it need to be Nigerian and UK partnerships? There's a lot of work that's been done on entrepreneurship in Africa. There's a lot of learnings that could be had, for example, from South Africa. Um, I think there's a lot of that knowledge that exists in Nigeria as well as within the continent. So I think we can sort of extend this notion of partnership, I think, beyond this, if you will, paternalistic sort of formal co uh, colonial power and, and formal colony. Um, so again, there's a lot of work that's been done recently around fairness and equity in North-South research partnerships. So some people are conceptualizing North-South par North partnerships in terms of complexity. So they're looking beyond those technical inputs in terms of what people are giving to each other, sort of asking about asking questions about inequity and sort of the roles, the processes, the practices and outcomes and, and historicizing and sort of situating these partnerships within 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 the context of, of power and within sort of the evolving context of, of that relationship. Um, and I say that because there are some allusions to the potential challenges or the challenges within the collab this collaboration process. So things like some of the institutions couldn't access information, for example. So I think there were some challenges there that that could have been um, a bit more um, critiqued. And I think my final comment, and I realize uh, we're, we're running out of time and other people have questions, is around, again, sort of stepping a little bit beyond um, the conceptualization towards the methodology. So this is an evaluation 
um, activity. Some recent work on African methodologies of evaluation, for example, that are based on, on um, philosophical assumptions that, that are incorporating African philosophies and, and, and African ontologies and epistemologies. Um, and they're looking at different criteria to evaluate projects, particularly projects that, are, that have been um, intervened or implemented in Africa. So I was wondering whether you had any thoughts around that, whether you thought about, you know, sort of just some of the recent ideas around um, using more African-based uh, evaluation uh, approaches towards this, towards this evaluation. Thank you very much. I'll stop there. Thank you so much. <laughs> Dr. Ogunyale, you really did a good job with that. Um, I think you kind of spoke a lot of, spoke a lot of our minds in your discussion. And I'll actually hinge on that when I raise my question as well. But perhaps I should give um, our presenters um, some time to respond before we raise um, other questions, if you have anything. Yeah, I'm the, yeah. Um, uh, let me use um, see if I can do that in a few minutes because of the time. Um, do we have more time for the discussion, or are we closing um, at exactly uh, ten minutes? Monique. Yes, we um, we started five minutes late, so I think we can go up, go over about five minutes at least. So you know, okay. just so you have ten minutes altogether for us to discuss. Okay, so. Um, Thank you, um, um, Dr. Bukola. Um, this is a very useful um, um, analysis of our paper discussion. And uh, but I want to mention um, um, before I explain a few things I may want to explain is um, evaluating um, project from entirely academic project um, angle or independent uh, perspective is different from um, evaluating project um, um, implemented by a funder and evaluation also funded by a funder, by the same funder. And so now um, the funder is funding the evaluation of each project to know what it can learn. We are the one pushing it also to um, uh, so that the others and the, in the academic and you know are outside the organization to also learn from it. So um, this helped to shape the nature or contributed to shaping the nature of the evaluation itself. One of the framework is um, British Council's um, result evaluation, result and evidence framework. Why not academic? Um, why not that of African model? Why not other evaluation models? So because um, the British Council funded the project and wanted to understand the, the, whether the project is working or not. It also wanted to understand uh, whether it is achieving the objective, the, the, the project objective and the overall British Council objective. So the, the, uh, within this context, the evaluation took place. So that helped to shape a lot of things and reduce uh, a lot of inter um, the integration of a lot of academic, you know, other issues, just like the review of other documents. Even if I wanted to review other document, it may be for maybe for publication. I review all the document in relation to the objective. Uh, so if we review uh, um, 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 uh, um, uh, literature policy and others in relation to the objective, you know, usually that may be very lengthy. By the time you see the report and um, implementers sometimes may not have that time to look at some of this. So how, yes. Um, it, but it's also important to look at different um, dimensions to know how we can strengthen that of the the the, 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 the um, funders uh, framework, but um, not entirely taking it away as we might do in the usual academic um, circle. Then um, the whether I also want to you know um, I mentioned here this is a very brief or an abridged version of the whole report. The one I sent you, I sent you is still a summary of the whole report. There are elements that were entirely, that may be entirely for the organization and maybe a, like a evaluation of their work, the way they work and how it benefit them. So this is, this is usual in, in most evaluations. If you want, if you, if the evaluation is um, 
designed for internal use. The element that is for internal use goes to the internal. The element that, that is for general use goes to general. So there are elements included which were for, inter, for, you know, for the improvement of the project generally. So that is one. Then um, in terms of the data collect, the primary point, we use them, um, we, uh, we, we develop um, the quantitative um, element uh, instrument and the, the, the deploy it via Kobo. So, but I have I've also been very careful how I use um, some of these to generalize because the survey of entrepreneurs is just those ones that are participated and you don't expect something like um, 1,500. If I integrate um, that element fully the way I might do it in academic, the next question is uh, the power. Uh, so next question is you're relating to a power and the relating to the size and all the rest of them. So I also have to be, um, we were very, uh, we are, we were, uh, very much aware of this, but um, cautiously presented because of the sample size. Remember, it is survey of entrepreneurs that we are involved, not just general survey. Then, um, the, yes, the report was presented in the, the findings were uh, aligned to uh, OECD DAC. Um, yeah, if you check, if you check even the presentation, I will still have something like the relevant to this contribution to British Council. Um, 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 a country plan. That one is a kind of result, some element from the result evidence framework. But the relevant to Nigerian institutions and the relevant to students is still that pointing to um, like an operationalization of the, the OECD that, but as I said earlier, or not all of them uh, were fully um, cap captured yet. The budget was, it was like a grant. So the budget was managed by the institutions by themselves, especially Nigeria. It was given to Nigerian institutions who reach out to the UK institutions. So, it, so but Nigerian team, Nigerian institutions manage the project, the budget. There are the sustainability beyond British Council support. We, should, we need to understand that the project itself, or um, some of the, uh, the project that were tied to this, we are an existing project of institution like the hubs. Um, if FUD has something like an agri project, so it was connected to the existing project, not just something abstract. So it was like strengthening what they already had. Yeah, thank you for other things you already commented. I will take note of that. But let me stop here to uh, allow others to also to comment. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much um, for your response. I wanted to note um, that as um, the point Dr. Bicola actually made that really struck me, um, the point of which I applauded <laughs> was where she stated that, well, partnership in conceptualizing it should have been up, um, the foremost thing, I think, in presenting the research elsewhere, you could probably bring that up first, how you conceptualized it in this research and what really made this a partnership. Because what, what struck me was um, the first question I had, even before um, our discussion came on board, was, well, how did you determine what the partnership would look like? Um, you did um, the literature review. Yes, you told us um, approaching the universities with this project. How did you decide that, okay, this university's greatest need, or who'd get, who got to decide that this university's greatest need was that they needed um, funding for an entrepreneurial hub, and this other one needed an exchange program for capacity building at 20, and this other one, how did they decide this um, based on whose assessment? And if it's the universities that chose that, yeah, this is what we need the most, I wonder on which grounds you as the researcher saw this as correct after you've assessed their university is what they needed the most. Um, I would like to see your opinion on that. Um, because once I thought of perhaps what a university would need for, uh, most, there will be a lot of things, obviously, but I thought perhaps one of the things that I think saw coming out would have been, do you people give them access, that the British Council would give them access to journals that they would typically, that would or subsidize access to journals that their students could and their staff could um, access, which they would typically not have access or enable, enable a way that they could also um, 
produce, share their Buddhist knowledge in journals that wouldn't have the gatekeeping of other of the institutions in the West, the journals that they the journals that they have. And um, so many different ideas of what they could possibly give. And but where where after um, Dr. Bikula actually did the discussion, I think she kind of nailed the hammer and uh, hammered the nail, sorry, on the point that I was thinking, because I was wondering if it's a partnership is shared, but a lot of what came through the presentation was this person gave this to these other people. And I'm wondering what this other person gave because the decolonizing that we're talking about is not only one way, it's both ways. They also need to decolonize, not, not just us. So how did the Nigerian universities give to them? What did they give to them? How did they decolonize them? Or how did they also contribute? And I would have liked to see that um, real partnership, so to speak, come through in your presentation. Obviously, as you said, um, you have a wider report that might have this information on it that we haven't, but I think that should be foremost when you're doing your presentation again in future. And that's just my comment, and I, we have another one coming in from Tiffany, so I'll pass it on to her now. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Chidi, for the comprehensive uh, uh, presentation that you've made and also to the discussant. I think my question is also uh, just uh, zeroes in on what the discussant mentioned, because I had already uh, like typed in the question, and it still has to do with the issue of partnerships. And my question was, what were, what were the power dynamics like in the relationship? Because when you talk of collaboration in higher education, it's more about internationalization of higher education. And one of the criticisms that have been leveled about uh, the models used in internationalization of higher education is the hegemonic way in which the North tends to dominate the South. So my question there was, what to what extent did the were the African universities, uh, their, what, what, what extent was their input regarded, or did they come to the table as equal partners, or there was that um, the the differences in terms of was it a top down kind of partnership, or was it an equal equal kind of partnership? And in terms of uh, you talked about issue of uh, issues of um, uh, publishing and things like those. So what were the terms and terms and agreements with regards to partnership? Who owned the thing because there are another criticism also about these collaborations with the North and the South is that even in terms of things like authorship and publications to uh, 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 journals to publish in, it's mainly determined by the global North. So my question also was about, since the talk was about partnership, my interest was to find out what the nature of the partnership was like, how the different players in the, in the partnership came in and what their power dynamics were like. Thank you very much. Yeah, um, thank you very much. Um, I think um, my response is very simple and straight. There was existing um, partnership that was there. Um, then we came in to evaluate what was on ground. So we were not involved in the determination of um, who who does what, how they did it, but actually to understand what they, what was done, how it was done. Is it succeeding? Is it working or will it not work? But I've taken, I'm also taking, um, the analysis didn't go deep into the, the nature of the partnership. As I mentioned before, this is a more like um, the academic dimension. Yeah, I am. I, I, my perspective has been post-colonial, decolonial. If you read some of my work, including my PhD, so that I understand um, this dimension as well. But in terms of um, uh, the the of the evaluation objective, we didn't um, go this, but uh, this dimension. But um, it's also important uh, in preparing the maybe publishing uh, the publication from this work. Um, it is important to put this into consideration. We need to analyze and incorporate these elements. Thank you. OK, so thank you for that. Thank you for your response. We, I think we are exactly five minutes over time. And again, I'd like to appreciate you for showing up, for reaching out to Prop Walker, 
to share research with us. We really appreciate that. And again, she, regret it. she regrets not being here. Dr. Picola, thank you for joining us on such short notice and for such a brilliant discussion of the research. I think you really, really made this lively. Um, once again, thank you all for joining us. Till next time. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you, Bukima.